coins alive, what you gon' do? Man, pool fees are high, high Order no, order no, order no Where does it start? Nobody knows It's a revolution, ayy Bitcoin is the one, no substitution, ayy We should see in your glow, be it's order no revolution Welcome back to Order Revolution. My name is Shizzy on this channel. We cover the entire Bitcoin ordinal ecosystem. What is up, guys? We have an amazing show for you guys today, like always. But today is extra special because we're talking about bitmaps. And obviously, here we love bitmaps, right? Our logo is a damn bitmap, right? So we are we are um really, really bullish on bitmaps. Obviously, it's taking a dip, but we're not worried. Uh, we, we know what it's going to be. We, we know the people behind that's working behind the scenes. There's a lot going on that people just don't realize. And you know, that's fine. I kind of like it. I kind of like being the 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 guy underneath now. Like we're not on top no more, but it's all right because let runes do their thing, let let the side chains do their thing, and then bitmaps will come up later and like like they never left. And it's gonna be absolutely amazing. But today we have uh Ben Schiller on. He's building this amazing platform called Bitmap 420. And and you know they, they they're like backing from the Bitcoin startup labs like it's going to be it's going to be huge and I'm, we're glad to get them on way before they even get started so uh, really excited for this one but without further ado let me bring in my partner here as always Mister Yago B what's up buddy what's up man what's going on I had to wear my Got bitmap <laughs> represent for this episode oh, yeah. so uh, this is something that you brought to me uh, we were we were had a nice discussion on it after you brought it and we were checking out the site and we're like holy crap this looks like it's gonna be pretty big um what, what can you tell me about this project um um so the first thing is I, I feel like it's perfect timing for this to come out um it was you know kind of uh it, it was a bit sad to see like the, the the energy of bitmap kind of come down right but like you said there was stuff happening behind the scenes that we weren't seeing but um when i found out who was kind of leading the charge here it got me really excited uh when we found out it was ben schiller we've had him in our spaces several times when we used to do our saturday morning spaces and we know that he's he's gained a lot of experience from the bit bitcoin startup lab uh, a lot of leadership from albert and, and his guys over there and um you know, it, it made me feel just really good because I know there was a call to action from Jeff and Merlin Chain and some other people in the space about like, hey, let's let's help. Let's get some builders. Let's, let's start building Bitmap up again. And then this comes out, you know, um, and a couple other things, too, like the Bitmap Emporium and stuff. So I'm like, OK, lately I'm feeling better and I'm really excited to, to get Ben up and, and ask him, you know, get deep into what they got planned because it looks really exciting. Yeah, I, I'd be lying to you, to you if I wasn't excited about these prices, though. This is, uh, you know, this is, these are these are amazing prices for Bitmap. But uh, without further ado, let's bring in the man himself, Ben Schiller. Welcome to the show, my friend. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much for, for having me. For sure. Yeah, man. All right, Ben, let's dig into it, man. Um, uh, you know, on the show, obviously, we're going to talk about your project. Can't wait to dig into it. But we, we kind of want to know the person behind it, right? So if without good people in the space, we don't have a good space. But we think you're one of the good ones. So if you can kind of tell us as uh, far back as possible uh, just about yourself. Yeah. So, uh, you know, jumping off from your your show, I think that's a, a, good, a good starting point. So uh, I initially found you guys because I am a creator in the space, right? So... Um, you know, I, I bought my first Bitcoin, you know, long ago, completely. I think like a lot of uh, a lot of people in Bitcoin, you know, moved on to other things because, quite frankly, Bitcoin was boring for a very <laughs> long period of time. Uh, and it wasn't until probably uh, February of last year when I first heard about uh, ordinals that I was like, oh, Bitcoin might be exciting again. Um, so, you know, it, that, that same feeling the, the first time around where I was like, you know, I downloaded a, a, a desktop Bitcoin wallet for the first time and God knows how long, uh, you know, just staying up all night, kind of going, you know, reading everything about, uh, inscriptions and, um, you know, just that, that exciting feeling that you get when you're like, oh, wait a minute, have I eaten today? <laughs> because you're like, you know, so into, uh, so into it, and you know, all the experiences that that goes with it, right? Where it's like, uh oh, I think I just spent the thing I inscribed. Uh, you know, all the all the lessons. So just reaching out and, and trying to educate myself, and came across your guys' show, um, and uh, yeah, just started to kind of. The, I think one of the thing that that just put the excitement to even the next level was just 
just seeing how supportive people are in terms of you know building the community, the the building the community of builders, right? So just getting encouragement, getting information, getting knowledge, getting experience from uh, other people. I, I had a chance to talk with uh, uh, Danny Yang from uh, uh, OnChain Monkey, and you know one of the things we were talking about was uh, the idea of recursion, which technically is you know using a piece of code that's on chain to uh, build something else, right? Um, but that's also kind of like the ethos of the community where it's like people are just kind of like building and sharing on top of uh, one another to, to continue expanding. So uh, that's the vibe that sort of got me. And, and from there, it was just like, okay, well, um, how can we have fun? How can we push it? How can, you know, how can we do all the things that I want to do in, in my head and share them with, uh, with other people? So, um, and just in terms of uh, one other thing, in terms of uh, background, so I, you know, come at it with at, with the uh, experience of of working in, um, you know, the the prof as a professional artist. So a lot of the the like three D and two D stuff and coding that ends up being on chain that was kind of already in my in my wheelhouse, and then sort of cross that with just being a, a crypto nerd. <laughs> this is kind of like the the perfect uh, intersection of that with one more other thing, which we'll get into as we get into the um, uh, the core of Bitmap 420 and sort of the the digital land aspect. Um, I also have a, a background in uh, traditional real world assets uh, as well. One of my have the great fortune to be mentored by uh, uh, a real estate mogul that has you know, five billion assets under management. So kind of seeing how the processes uh work when it comes to that scale of land management and sort of taking that vision as we go through and sort of start to construct the the digital digital land world so uh, that sort of that's my my triangle of of intersection being a crypto nerd being an artist um and also into real world assets and land it's awesome man it's a lot of experience for sure um, let's talk a little bit about how you stumbled upon Bitcoin Startup Lab. Obviously, that's been a big influence of, of, of uh, you know, guiding you and stuff like that. Could you talk a little bit about how you found it and your experience with it? Yeah, so that's, uh, it, you know, it's one of those serendipitous things. And, you know, it just, I don't know what you believe in, but I believe that there aren't any accidents. So the more random things happen, it's like, okay, that's the... The pointer in the right direction and um uh you know i just it was one of those things where it was like i kind of have this idea but you know i don't even know where to start and it's like i think it could be massive actually i know it could be massive and i don't really see anyone doing it and it was just one of those things where it was like if i'm you know just type it into the google machine if i wanted to do this how would i start and like that was just the first thing it was like oh bitcoin startup lab we've got you know, a, a cohort starting now. And I think the, uh, like the deadline was in like a couple of days. So it was like, do this right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's the, the guys that are very, very accessible. So, you know, reach out to Albert and, and it's just one of those things you have the, you know, you immediately have a connection, you have a great chat and it's like, it's like, yeah, this makes, makes perfect sense. So, uh, I just leave it to good fortune. No such thing as, as accidents. We just, you know, you just sometimes you just feel when you meet the right person at the right time when you're the right person to meet that person where it just all sort of aligns. That was just one of one of those things. Awesome. Could, could you kind of give us um your experience from like uh like first joining till till like the the end of the cohort? Yeah. So I first and foremost, I, I highly recommend anyone, whatever stage they're at, if it's just a you know a a glimpse of an idea to something you're already working on. If you, if you truly want to, um, and this is, if there's anything as quote unquote, a catch, the catch is, you know, they really are building things to be ultimately to be, um, you know, investment ready startup. So, um, not everything needs to have investors and that's totally, totally cool. Um, but that's what this is. Bitcoin startup lab. That's like their tagline. We build investment ready startups. Um, so having said that, it's I think the uh, the thing that I, I have got and still get is just having a um, 
kind of a scientific approach. I mean, that's I think their uh, their secret sauce is is really distilling uh, distilling what could be a very you know confusing and and you know, sort of amorphous process into something that has a lot more structure. So um, when I talk about that, it's like okay, you know, this is the structure of going out and talking to a hundred people. Right. Uh, you know, so many, uh, myself included, so many people, it's like, oh, I've got an idea and I want to build this thing and, you know, let's make a demo. And it's like, no, nope, don't build anything. Just talk to a lot of people. And what you're trying to do is actually invalidate the thing that you fell in love with. Right. So it's like this, this great idea. The first thing that you do is try to find all the different ways that it won't work. <laughs> and and really get an honest opinion of people, um, you know, if they truly get excited about it. Because most often, people aren't going to tell you what they really think. Uh, so you have to take your emotions out of it um, and just, you know, make it all all data, right? And just focus on focus on that. Um, and from there, it's uh, you know, once you get that going, it's constantly getting feedback. Um, so that way you're you're never really out in in the wilderness you're never really committed to something and i've done this in the past on projects where it's like you know i've literally spent years of my life i've literally spent millions of dollars to get to the end of a rabbit hole and you're like oh wait a minute the market doesn't actually want this thing that i fell in love with so much uh so it's it's really a process of it's a counter seemingly counterintuitive process of you know, really trying to have people punch you in the face on a daily basis. <laughs> and, but the point is you either learn how to duck or you get stronger and you evolve, right? And ultimately you get to the point where, and this is the results that I think a lot of people see, which is like, you look at Liquidium, you look at Velar, you look at all of these companies that are like, oh, wow, they're just growing so fast. And, you know, they found something perfect. How lucky were they? And it's like, no, it's not lucky at all. They've, you know, followed this process and and they've gotten to the point that they're at now, not, um, you know, by happenstance, but by calculation. And I think having that process in place is just, I mean, I, I could not pay these people enough and, and, and then it's actually working the other way around, like they're giving me stuff. Um, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. And then the other thing I'll add to, uh, add to that is just the network of people involved. You go to the uh, BTC startup lab site, and you see the the roster of uh, uh, advisors of you know co investors. It's insane. So on a weekly basis, that uh, you know you're in there like four days a week, um, you know a few hours, two to three, two to four hours a day, depending on what the the schedule of the day is. Um, and you know just to like one week, we had okay, here's demo talking about the future of BRC twenty. Here's Casey uh, telling us about what's upcoming in rooms. Here's um, Danny from OCM. Here's Jason from Sora Ventures, and it's just like on and on and on and on. And everyone's just giving you like unfiltered. You know, this isn't being recorded most of the time, so they're giving you like the real, you know, the the real deal. Uh, you know, perspective and and uh, they're sharing their experience. So uh, it's super super valuable, and it's you know just paying immense dividends. I can't can't speak highly enough about it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, from from what you just said, I imagine that you didn't end up doing what your original idea was when you first got there. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think we pivoted like six times before we gotcha. we kind of got to like, oh, I think we've we've narrowed it down. It was kind of it, it was all loosely in the same direction, but. Um, definitely much much more much much more focused yeah and they encourage pivoting if it you know because i know like they're that they, they actually encourage failure there we've talked about this on the spaces and stuff so that's awesome <laughs> you know um i i definitely also encourage anybody that like has any ideas out there if you if you're in the bitcoin ecosystem space um you know ben schiller definitely has has uh given praise to Albert and his 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 crew over there, but yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm I'm so glad that you because you were in our spaces like for the past like six months. I want to say like in and out, just you know popping in and stuff. And sounds like sounds like you got your your project now. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's um, that's the other thing. It's you know being able to to not only have the structure of talking to people, but you know by being in in communities like like yours, it's like having the people to talk to. I mean, and that's just a whole nother I think value that that uh, you guys add and and some of the other shows out there. It's like being aggregators for you know for people. So it's like just those conversations and and meeting people in spaces. It's like Hey, I've got this idea. What do you think about this? And being able to get that, you know, honest feedback from people who are actually doing stuff in the space. I think that's been a, an added bonus as well. For sure. I agree. All right, man. Let's let's get into what everyone's been waiting for. What what is uh bitmap 420? How to get started and uh where are we going with this? Yeah, so the um uh, bitmap 420 are are Ultimate goal is to you know, unleash the, the, the power of, of Bitcoin metaverse assets. So first, let's talk about uh, the, the Bitcoin metaverse. Um, you know, there's, there's basically two parts to it, right? You have the land, which is Bitmap, um, and then you have the assets and experiences, which right now is under the BRC420 uh, protocol. So uh, affectionately known as the metaverse protocol. So hence our name, Bitmap420. You can see exactly what we're what we're focusing on. Um, so the the broad idea first off is that you know all the I think we all share this idea, which is all the fun stuff that's been happening on other chains for uh, however long is eventually inevitably going to come to the Bitcoin blockchain, right? So that includes the uh, the old what we consider the the old metaverse. So all the stuff that you saw in uh, Ethereum, um, you know, Decentraland, um, Sandbox, and and the lot. All that eventually, that type of stuff uh, will come to will come to uh, Bitcoin, and it will come on top of Bitmap. So seemingly that's inevitable. And you look at the numbers of that, um, you know, height of of bull market, just those uh, three: Decentraland, um, Axie, and uh, Sandbox, as like you know, twenty plus billion dollars. So right. So when I say uh, Bitmap to twenty k. <laughs> It's like, well, that's where the number comes from. Let's say by the time we're at, you know, block one million, uh, market caps twenty billion plus. That's that's where you get the the twenty thousand. Although I always do caveat it with, we might go to zero before we hit twenty thousand, and we'll talk about the price a little bit later. But uh, that's the, the the sort of uh, you know level one of things, uh, and that's where I started. Uh, like I said, you know, coming to your show as as a creator, I. I Love the love the idea. I love the artistic challenge of building of being a creator for on chain art. Um, the canvas of the Bitcoin blockchain has such um, limitations, right? In terms of space, in terms of um, you know size of of things, it's like you have to really be creative to get something impactful and actually be able to inscribe that uh, on chain. But as an artist, the constraints ultimately are the source of creativity, right? So you look at some of the things that folks are doing, um, you know, Bobbleton, uh, Arjun, uh, uh, Astral, um, and you just look at like all these crazy experiences that they're putting on chain. And it's like, how did you do that? <laughs> right? All the coding that's involved, all the optimization, all of the compression, um, you know, so you have this crazy, crazy technical side of things. Um, but ultimately that creates something, you know, visually beautiful and that's a great, great experience. So uh, just as, as an artist, I, I love that challenge. So that made me gravitate towards bitmap that made me gravitate towards BRC 420. So um, started with, okay, Hey, I'm just going to like create cool stuff and with the assumption that, you know, this, all the, the things behind it, we're going to continue to evolve. Right. So if you look at the uh, BRC 420 um, and we call them protocols and standards right now, they're very loose social consensus. <laughs> and so if you actually read the paper, I'd say it's maybe like 15 percent complete or something like that. Um, and, you know, and it says placeholder here, you know, 3D uh, metadata descriptions. Uh, we'll we'll get to that part later. <laughs> and it's like 2D uh, descriptions. And, yeah, we can do music and uh you know and all these other uh, asset types um but those are left you know the the fields for those are, are left blank and it's like okay 
fine. Well, just start going, and you know the the road will will rise to meet you. And I think I got to a point, and a lot of other creators are at this point now, where it's like that development hasn't continued. Um, and we can get into that because I think it's important to the broad arc of not only uh, bitmap and 420, but definitely what uh, what we're doing. But we're we're at this point where um, I think a lot of assumptions about what would we what would be developed haven't come to pass. And to me, you can either complain about things, you can you know get out the pitchforks or opportunity. Right <laughs> here's like a golden opportunity to actually build the things that you want to exist. Right. It's like how do you predict the future? It's like you make it. Okay, so yeah. uh, that's sort of you know just personally where where I'm coming from on a practical level. It means that um, okay, how do we make these things more accessible? Um, how do you get you know, a million people onto onto Bitmap? How do you get people who are artists and get their assets uh, who see all this exciting thing, all these exciting things happening? How do you get them uh, on chain? And you need you know. You need a common language. So those two things, being able to make things more accessible uh, on one side and then um, continuing to progress to actually make the tools that make it easier for people to uh, create, for people to engage, for people to expand, for people to build whatever experiences that they're going to build. Those are those are that's the the kind of the the underpinnings of of what we're, we're we're trying to do. So I'll say that that's the broad part, and then I can get into specifics of. Um, but first, I just want to make sure. Uh, do you guys have any any questions or, or thoughts on on that before I continue? Yeah, I do. Um, so you know this this sounds great, Bitmap four twenty, but it you know first for someone that's been in the space like Shizzy and myself, you know, for a while. Um, like immediately we see that, you know, you guys have partnered with Merlin chain, which I think is really great. Cause it's, you know, you think about the scaling side, but what, where is your, your focus going to be first? Is it going to be on like bitmap BRC 420, those platforms layer one, or is it on the scaling side for Merlin chain? Um, I know that's kind of a, a, a hard, like a curveball at first first question out the gate but uh I'm just kind of curious where your mind is what needs the most attention yeah so that, that's a that's a great question and and that gets to uh, I think the 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 core of what we're what we're looking at which is um, there's three three basic components that we're uh, dealing with so uh one is looking at let's call them um, digital land management tools and the the most bland uh, approach possible, but just to give you a, a straight straight um, view of, of what we're looking at. So that's really about bringing utility to bitmap. So first um, first question most people ask me is like, okay, bitmap, um, which one is good, right? <laughs> like which one do I, which one should should I buy? And, and right now there's really no simple way to to determine that. So um, this is where something like using um, our AI analysis tool, where you know we're looking at the uh, bit, um, bitmap white paper, looking at all the the uh, value theories of bitmap, looking at all of the or cataloging uh, bitmaps according to their uh, block tributes, um, their block attributes, and based on what somebody values, we can point them to say, okay. You like numbers. You like Chinese lucky numbers. Okay, these ones are probably, and you want to go, you know, within this price range. You want, you know, this timeline. Um, these are probably the ones that should be on your target list, right? Nothing like that exists. To try to answer the most basic question, which one should I buy? And it's like, okay, why is no one buying? How about we try to answer that? Which one should I buy, right? Um, and you you talk about so these are just like you know super super simple things where and you know I, I, I turn to um, you know the core dev my friend Jason on this and we look at each other and we're like how come no one's built this and we're like oh we're the ones to build it okay great um, another thing which is like okay uh, there's eight hundred what eight hundred forty thousand and 
plus whatever since block having uh, bitmaps, right? Um, you know, maybe people buy one of those when it gets to time, but my sense is that, you know, communities are probably going to want to gravitate around each other, which what communities do. Um, so maybe a block, and we're seeing this with um, uh, uh, Bitmap Emporium, right? Where it's like, it's not exactly yet, but you can see in the collection, it's like the collection is based on a, uh, a single bitmap um, and the amount of, uh, of artworks in the collection is based on the amount of transactions in the bitmap, right? Which are parcels. And it's like, okay, well, if you actually wanted to parcel a bitmap, everyone can do it now, but it's super, super clunky. It's kind of, you have to hop through, you know, multiple sites, you're copying and pasting. It doesn't adhere, at least to this, uh, the way people are doing it now, it doesn't really adhere to um, the, the standard ordinals parent-child relationship process. Um, and it's like, well, why don't we just do that? And if you read the, the, the bitmap white paper, it's literally in there. It says parent-child relationship. And once again, we're like, how come no one's built a parent-child relationship parceling tool? Um, so that's literally the first thing we're doing is parent-child parceling. Uh, second thing, AI analysis to try to answer those basic um, you know, utility questions, which we think are going to um, you know, make it easy for people to come in, right? That should be like, no matter what business you're in, it's just like, are we making it easier for you to buy stuff from us. And if we consider the us being bitmaps, it's like, yeah, which one should I buy? Um, and how can I get one, right? Okay, so let's start by answering that. The second part, which I think uh, is is implied in, in your question is the, the sort of second tranche of, of things that we're looking at, which are um, the metaverse asset trading. So um, I don't think there's really a, a good place to trade bitmap. Right now, there's a lot of marketplaces, but the way the characteristics of bitmaps, and then we're just talking bitmaps, let alone parcels, let alone uh, non-arbitrary tokens, and, and we'll definitely get into that. But just with bitmaps, it's like it's like trying to trade forex on Robinhood. There's like so much data, and it's not really being addressed, so you can't really appreciate the true value of what you're getting because right now all the marketplaces basically treat bitmaps as just another NFT, right? Um, if you go on Magic Eden, God bless them, thank you for the volume, but you don't can't really tell much about what you're buying when you're looking at Magic Eden, right? It's just like, they're all kind of like laid out together. There's no way to, you know, to sort of cluster and bundle things that you want together um, because they're looking at, things as from a, an, an NFT side of things, as opposed to what I think the, the untapped uh, potential for bitmap is, is really in thinking of it as block data markets. Um, and that gets into uh, what you're talking about with non-arbitrary tokens. It starts to get into, um, let's say you want to develop a game uh, and you want a certain amount of rarity in the you know, the, the crystals that are, that are part of your, your game, but you want the whole thing to exist on chain. Obviously the best place to get on chain data is the block itself, right? So, you know, how can you, how can you identify that? How can you create a market around that? Um, how can you create assets, ultimately have the, you know, quote unquote land generate those assets. Uh, if you can, if you can't even see what it is that you're, that you're buying. So, um, you know, that gets into the second part, which is the bitmap BRC420 marketplace that also takes into account this sort of view as um, block uh, block data markets. That's the, I think the, the simplest way to, to put it. So those are the two, the two big buckets. So it's the, the land management part and then the marketplace part. So starting with the land, man, land management part, um, and then it's like, okay, once we build momentum around there, then you know we'll have more tradable things that would trade in the way that uh, that we're kind of thinking about it, and then develop the marketplace around that. And I think 
you know, that's where you get into, um, you know, obviously that sort of trading most likely would seemingly have to take place on, on a layer two for any level of efficiency. And that's how we're seeing um, the usage of not only of Merlin chain, but, uh, and I'll get a little bit into the, the technical part of, of Merlin chain and, and why it's attractive. First and foremost, it's attractive because one, it's available, <laughs> it like actually exists. Uh, two, it, pretty much all of our sort of customer base, they're already there. Kind of so you know any startup one of the challenges that you're going to get is you know trying to aggregate people to use your thing and it's like you know i don't have to re-educate people on what bitmaps are what brc 420 is um because merlin chain's already done it so you know if you can kind of take that equation out part of the equation out and just get straight to do you actually want this thing that i have that's just an infinite time saver infinite resource saver um, that's the second thing but the third thing is Merlin Chain is basically, you know, I hear the criticisms like, ah, oh, it's Polygon. It's not exactly. Um, so it's a Polygon CDK, which is the chain development kit. So Polygon basically said, okay, we're gonna build uh, this ZK layer mechanism uh, and you can use it on top of any type of chain. Um, so you just heard OKX, they released their X layer. So it's that with, Ethereum as the, the underpinning. So what Merlin Chain did was swap out the Ethereum part, put in Bitcoin, um, and boom, there you go, we've got Merlin Chain. But the promise of the Polygon CDK is that anyone who uses that on any chain, whether that's Near or Cosmos or ICP, as long as you have the, the Polygon CDK layer, you should be able to freely move assets across chain within that layer. So if we're talking about bringing liquidity to bitmap brc 420 and block data markets uh that's a pretty massive way if you can ring together all of these chains and have assets freely move between multiple layer twos um that would certainly help to solve the the liquidity problem yeah yeah that's a whew, man, that's a lot but <laughs> the one thing that you said that really got me excited and i kind of wish that you would do the second part first and do the first <laughs> part second because um i think that that's how nats should have been launched initially to benefit the bitmap community now and, and i understand people you know wanted to do this the standard their way it was their project and and stuff like that and i, I respect that i do um but i think like to have like this this really robust ecosystem for bitmap is and and what will get the bitmap community excited again because we need this like resurgence of energy would be to you know uh pull data from each bitmap as you know br uh, uh brc 420 assets in a game or whatever based on data right so um i'm excited about that for you guys to do that and like i said i wish that you guys would do that first but i get you guys have a plan and everything like that but am, am i right that's what you guys are shooting for by the way yeah and and i think one of the uh one of the reasons that we're doing it is exactly doing it in this way is, is you touched on something there right which is um you want to have data that has the capacity to create assets so just using you know a, a basic let's call you know farmland type game where it's like, okay, I've got my uh, bitmap, I've got my particular parcel. This parcel is going to create wheat within this game. I'll trade it within the game and so on and so forth. Right now, the, the process of bitmap to parcel to asset to tradable asset, ultimately that game is going to look at that asset and go, okay, where did this come from? right? Because I need to know where it came from before it's going to be valid within my game. And right now, there's no way to trace that back because ultimately everyone's going to eventually get to the point where it's like, I'm not going to refer to any off-chain database for ownership, which is what we have now with um, Ordinal's collections, right? It's like a, yep. it's a JSON file sitting on you know, Magic Eden servers, and that's fine. I upload JSON files to Magic Eden all the time um, but sooner or later people are going to be like you know on chain or gtfo right um so that whole thread can't exist right now so that marketplace for those you know that digital that digital corn that digital wheat 
it can't exist because no one can say, hey, where did this thing come from? So that's why we need to get at the very core is like, okay, let's make sure we do this that fits um, that fits the the current um, you know ordinals parent child relationship. That's just like one of those core just like if you don't build this, then all the other stuff doesn't come. Um, so if you want a marketplace where you're trading all those you know crystals and minerals, they're going to need to show provenance. And if the provenance isn't on chain, then it's all going to fall apart, right? It's actually, it's never going to get started, let alone fall apart. So uh, I think it's the first part is something we can do, you know, relatively, relatively quickly, um, and then move on to the uh, the other parts, which, and I definitely have your excitement. I, I, I desperately want to, just for my own personal, um, uh, you know, satisfaction and um, you know, to pump my own bags and build so many BRC 420 things that it's like it's basically impossible to find them. Like, you know, trading BRC 420 assets um, are just, as Jess, Jeff said on your show, it's not the best experience. Um, yeah. So if we can make it easier to uh, to be able to trade all of these assets, whether it's bitmap, whether it's BRC 420, um, and, and ultimately the non-arbitrary tokens, um, I think there needs to be a better name for that because there's like, you know, there's, I, I was going with the, uh, you know, something more, more natural, <laughs> some yeah. natural, something arbitrary because there it's like, it's, it's basically mining bitmap, right? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, it, it would just make it so much more exciting. Like, like um, I, I have like, let's say right now I have like 106 bitmaps. Right. And I would like, want to go back into my bitmaps and look at every single one of them you know what i mean and be like okay how much how much how many of this brc 420 do i have on this bitmap how many of, you know it, it would just in, like i i feel like re-energize like the whole bitmap community but i don't know shizzy what do you think do you think i'm off yeah. on that no i think i think it's a great idea so it sounds to me and, and like tell me if i'm wrong here but you guys are going to upgrade big bitmap you're going to take it from the json file that it is today to something that's on chain potentially a BRC 420. Am, am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, I, I think the um, one of the things that I loved about the original concept of, of BRC 420 is it has the characteristics of both a fungible and non-fungible token. Um, so I think right now they basically exist as uh, the non-fungible tokens, right? It's like you, you have the NFT part, but um, the, the sort of the I think the best way to think of it is is like the commodity trading aspect, the the resource trading aspect that hasn't been touched on at uh, at all. And I think there's um, a uh, just a, a massive opportunity. One, I think that is the differentiator from metaverse to Bitcoin metaverse. That whole you know everything that comes after opening that door, I think is is so unique to to Bitcoin that there's just you know immense 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 value that we haven't even gotten to yet because that's there that everyone can see but we just don't have the tools to to access it and create it right now yeah because that would be awesome if i could take my bitmap to you to your 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 website and then upgrade it to a brc20 pay the fee and then i can flip it around and all that stuff is is that something that you guys could potentially build or am i just uh, imagination going crazy here no, that's <laughs> your imagination <laughs> is crazy, but it's a it's a great yeah. So just the um, uh, you know just having as as many different things that allow yeah. people to um, utilize their their bitmaps and in ways that are actually fun, exciting, profitable, uh, and and enjoyable for sure. Because yeah. I would pay for that if I could take one of my bitmaps to your site and then you guys make it a PRC four twenty. I paid the inscription fee and now I could trade it differently on it. I don't know. It sounds all. It sounds yeah. awesome. There's, there's so well, many uh, different ways you guys you guys could really go with this. It's, it's like I love how you guys are building the tooling uh, potentially for bitmap and th there's you know the the process is probably endless, but there's probably so much opportunity. Yeah, and that's one of the uh, the things having the um, you know just a, a more real world assets background is helpful with as as well, right? So it's like you know if you think of I mean, pretty much you can trade anything in, in real world markets, right? So people bundle car loans, people bundle credit card debt. You know, when you had the, the 2008 crisis, it was 
people bundling mortgages. Now, that in itself wasn't the problem. The fact that no one knew what the heck they were buying <laughs> and then leveraged that up, that turned out to be a, a pretty big problem. Um, but the, the part of bundling these things together, that just makes it much more efficient to trade. So, for example, to Chizzy, to, to use your example, if you've got a, a bitmap and you've got you know 2,000 transactions within that, um, which is 2,000 parcels, just to make it a, a nice round number, um, you know, maybe 500 of those have similar characteristics uh, and that are high value. Maybe 100 of them have similar characteristics that are low value. Maybe, you know, the rest have somewhere in, in the middle, right? Does it make more sense to trade that as a single bitmap? Probably not. It, I mean, you can, but it's probably not the most efficient in terms of, one, getting a buyer what it is that they actually want. And then two, you know, the, the efficiency of making sure that you get the most value of, of what you have. And that's the kind of like mirror of the traditional, um, you know, traditional real world asset management that that I, I think we bring that most other people aren't even really thinking about. It's like, okay, how can we trade that uh, bundle of parcels and maybe mix and match them together, um, you know, kind of make those into, into separate things. And that in and of itself, I mean, you know, it, it's crypto. People will, will trade anything and it'll definitely trade anything if it actually has value. So that's the, yeah. the sort of the long-term view that we're, that we're looking at. 100%. And the layers of value, like you, you just explained, because like at the end of the day, like if, if you're pulling data from each bitmap and different data points, types of data points, and, you know, each data point is another layer of value. Um, but let's say like, one bitmap just doesn't have those other layers like or an abundance of it you still have that base layer of value of the bitmap right and so i think that's that's like what the dream has always been for most everybody in here and then some somewhere along the line um, the people that were passionate about it just kind of started to go into their own directions and there wasn't this community of, of, of uh, similar thought that was that was there earlier but i'm really hoping that this brings it back and and uh, you know, this is a big daunting task, you know, um, and I know that you've been guided through the Bitcoin startup lab, but could you talk a little bit about like how big your team is and, and um, like, you know, what, what that looks like? Yeah, for, for sure. As I swap my headset here. Um, yeah. So the, uh, you know, I, I was talking to, so I'm in Dubai right now, just went through token 2049, um, and Bitcoin Startup Lab, one of the great things that uh, they do is, is have uh, mixers around events. So you get to meet investors, you get to meet you know, people in the, in the cohort that you haven't met, um, but you also get to meet other founders that have gone through. So um, virtually, I met Robin from Liquidium uh, a while back, and this is the first time uh, we got to meet in, in person. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, uh, that, we, that we spoke about was he was kind of like my example of going through um and liquidium for those who don't know is a, uh, a lending platform for uh for um right now uh basically ordinals um but all kinds of uh bitcoin related assets and uh he went through the the entire thing and, and didn't have his current technical co-founder yet so basically he went through the process uh, doing those things, talking to people, building figmas, uh, getting feedback. Uh, so as I was going through, you know, looking for a, a technical co-founder, you know, that's what uh, Albert was telling me. It's like, stick to the process, stick to the formula. It worked out for Robin at Liquidium. Just, just follow that and you'll, you'll be okay. Uh, and ultimately found uh, Jason, my, uh, uh, you know, the, the technical, um, I call him my, my core dev. He likes to be called an intern. <laughs> for for fun um but you know he's built you know, things for institutional staking or staking clients for institutional um you know companies that are like you know all the names that you would probably think of when you talk about you know the top 500 institutional staking clients in the world right multiple billions of, of dollars of, of stuff so it's like you ultimately get to you know, find the people that you need and in just the perfect, perfect time. So still a pretty small team. Uh, it's us two right now. The main thing that we're looking for right now is, uh, is a designer. We've been fortunate to start to um, 
particularly grow in, you know, as, as my voice would probably suggest, I'm a, a Westerner. Um, for those who have been following the space, a lot of the development um, center of gravity for bitmap and BRC420 is eight uh, in Asia, you know, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Singapore, one of the reasons I wanted to move to Dubai. Um, so we're starting to get some great community support uh, in that area, which I'm super, super excited about. Um, so those are really, I mean, being at the, the you know, kind of pre-seed stage, uh, definitely trying to keep the, the team small. So that's our, our core group, core group right now. Gotcha. So, so you guys are still looking for that, um, um, for that front end design kind of dev because you got the back end resolved right now, right? Yes. Gotcha. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, we're talking to, talking to some folks, some, some names, I think that you would probably know. And I think that's one of the, uh, benefits that we're, we're getting as well is just like kind of knowing the people in, in the space. It's like, Oh, you make cool stuff. Would you like to come work with us? <laughs> gotcha. And it's gotcha, like, gotcha. all right, it's slowly but surely filling out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, you know, I'm excited, uh, for y'all because this is something that I've been talking about, uh, with Shizzy, just kind of like bitmap needs something. I even told him too. I was like, cause you know, we, we've, uh, been brought on as advisors for a couple different projects and you know uh, one of them is building on Merlin as well not anything competing with you guys but you know um, something to kind of you know even if it's like a bitmap token as well like to where you can um, you know trade your you know uh, put put your bitmap up for a bitmap fungible token on in Merlin and trade that anything to kind of like you know get that that energy and community going but something like what you guys are building I think is like really amazing because it's like you're trying to you're not starting over from scratch, but what you're doing is saying, hey, maybe we could have done a couple things better before with how we do the the parent and um, child, uh, you know, uh, being able to set the the parent as the the main bitmap and the the parcels as a child, and then going on to that next step because at the end of the day, we all want the parceling, we want the goods that are on our bitmap because that's going to get us excited because now our bitmaps are worth more <laughs> at yes, the end of the day, yes, right? Exactly. And then we want the, we want the, the, the interaction, interactive part, the gaming, the, the, um, what have you to be able to utilize those assets on our bitmap in a game environment. And I think those three things, you know, are what we're all looking for in the bitmap community. And it looks like that's something that you guys are looking to kind of, solidify and 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 establish because once that's established then it's a network it's an open source network yes. to where all these other builders can come and that's what we need in my opinion yeah and and i think you're i think you're right because coming from the other direction i you know there's great progress being made right you've got inscribed space you've got bitmap valley you've got boxy um you've got ords games it's like that that side of it of the equation, if you, you know, if you kind of look at it as as a line, I definitely think that part is one. I think it's inevitable. I think two. There's some great folks working on it right now. Um, I'm not worried about that at uh, at all. I think the um, I'd personally get excited about you know nerdy tooling stuff. I uh, personally, so that's why you know it's like I'm I'm taking this this part of it. Uh, up and I just I think those two things once they meet together, uh, I think that exactly is is what's going to happen. It's just that's where the big bang happens. Yeah, man, I could definitely see some uh, partnerships and announcements in the future. Bitmap Valley, Foxy, Bitmap Community. It sounds like you guys have a, a, a lot of reaching out to do and a lot of people to talk to. But I'm, I'm very excited for your future. Um, it's been absolutely amazing to talk to. Um, this is kind of the part of the show where I kind of want to give you the stage to talk to our community. Um, you can kind of say what, what, whatever you want. Your last uh, your, your last couple of minutes here, uh, you know, speak to our community. Stage is yours. Yeah. So I think um, uh, one of the things I would I would say, and if I could go back to um, uh, the show that that Jeff was on, and I would I disagree with you guys on on one thing for for sure. So um, and just to give uh, background with uh, I think one of the things that's weighing on Bitmap right now, which is you know there's a lot of Bitmaps that are locked up right now. So 
um, locked up in Merlin chain, the idea was that, okay, you lock up your, your bitmaps and then, uh, you know, over time as they get staked, you'll get these additional assets and, and airdrops. Um, and then everyone's, everyone's happy in practice. I think what's happened is maybe a lot more people staked than anyone thought <laughs> there would possibly be. So, uh, last check there was what, like 30% of all bitmaps were, were locked in locked into uh, into Merlin chain. Um, the second thing is the market's changed since, you know, I think a lot of people started uh, locking them up there. We're in like the bitmaps are in the three to 400-ish range. Now they're sub 100. So everything's great until the number goes down <laughs> in crypto. So we, have, so we have that. And then, you know, all the other stuff that's come about. It's like runes have come, rune stones have come. You know, just, everything changes all all the time so there's this kind of funk right i think we can agree like bitmap is in in a, in a bit of a funk and to me i think the the best way to to deal with that is just to rip the band-aid off so i think the there's a sentiment that says hey the market's down don't unlock bitmaps now because then you know everyone's going to or at least a big enough number of folks are just going to be like i'm going to dump it buy some 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 rune that uh, name I probably can't uh, pronounce right now just because they're mostly so <laughs> offensive in the best possible way. Uh, I am a, a, a shit coiner as, as well. So it's not a criticism, but it's just the reality. Uh, and that's, you know, the concern. It's like if you unlock all of, you know, 30% of the supply, then a whole bunch of it is going to duck. And 20, be, you know, betting up to 20,000, but might go to zero first, like that's the scenario, right? Where it like just goes as close as you can to, to zero. But I think that's what should happen. I think that's the, you know, the the potential is you get into this sort of original sin, right? It's like, hey, we're trying to build this free and open, you know, sovereign digital space in the metaverse. Um, but at the very beginning, we're not going to let you actually have the land that you own. <laughs> right? it's like that is a just a fundamental uh disconnect and it's like yeah we want this you know decentralized thing where everyone can plug in and plug out and it's like um but we're going to make the centralized decision to not allow you to buy or sell or not allow you to to sell right it's like those are just just fundamentally opposed things and the longer and this is just my opinion but the longer that festers like the more unintended consequences you have. Honestly, I think the the best thing would have been would be to do the the unlock on having day because everyone else it's called yeah the Friday dump right. It's like everyone else is so busy with other things. People would have been like, oh, that's right, I have these unlocked bit, bitmaps, and no one would have even you know thought about it too much. Um, but we're in this situation now where it's like uh, it's kind of you know it's like a death grip right it's like i want to build something but who really wants to build on you know on the lowlands in front of this giant dam that's leaking and that you know is going to to burst right so it's like you know the the sooner we get past that my opinion i think the the better um and i don't want to hear and you know to uh jeff and merlin chain's defense i don't want to you know they shouldn't be criticized at all to be honest one no one forced you to give him to give your bitmaps to anybody, <laughs> let alone one place. No one forced you to do that, right? So everyone take responsibility for that. And then two, um, you know, Jeff came on your show and said, hey, I don't really want the responsibility of, you know, having this development because I've got $3 billion to deal with over here. And it's like, yes, please focus on, please focus <laughs> on that because that going bad would be bad for everyone, let alone, you know, bitmap, right? So- 100%. Um, I think that you know everything that they're doing makes makes perfect sense, and obviously everyone's, you know, it's my opinion. Everyone typically is trying to make the best decision that they can with what the situation is and and what they have. But regardless of how we got here, this is where we're at. Nothing good is going to happen while thirty percent of bitmaps are locked up in one place. I think we can agree that's not an ideal scenario. So the sooner we can get beyond that, the the better. Um, yeah. So before I, I show my own stuff, I'd love to get your your thoughts on on that. Well, yeah. If, to me, it's like uh, obviously I, I want I want all my stuff out, right? Um, I want everything back, my self custody. But 
safety first. Um, I, I want Jeff to do it in the smartest way possible. And if that means waiting, that is fine because I want to make sure, um, you know, that my Merlin tokens stay up in value and anything like anything like that happens, be pretty drastic to not just the price, but the devastation of the chain. So to me, I'm like, Jeff, take your time. Um, you know, I'm not really, if it, if it takes another couple of weeks, I'm completely fine with it because I'd rather have, you know, um, the, the, the chain stay in good, in good sight of everyone. You know, everyone thinks it's, it's amazing right now. And I want it to stay that way. So in my, in my eyes, take as long as you need, um, to make sure these assets come out of there safely. And, and then for me, I'm, um, I'm similar boat as Shizzy. I, I definitely think safety first because like. Like you said, reputation matters here. Um, I actually, um, I think I also agree with you. I think like releasing those bitmaps, kind of getting that Band-Aid ripped off. But I, I don't know if bitmaps will get hit as hard as some of these other like puppets. Because like so many people are asking for their puppets because puppets jumped up so high, right? Bitmaps already taken that hit. Like it's taken the hit. You know, so like a lot of these people that are getting their bitmaps back. A lot of them might have the mindset of, you know, I, I, you know, they have conviction. Maybe they'll say, you know, I know I'm not selling my bitmaps as soon as I get them back. I'm holding them, but I also have conviction in bitmap. Um, I think it's going to be uh, bitmaps taken, you know, been the punching bag the past two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Um, I think that there's not a ton of downside left. Yes, it could obviously go to 20 bucks. Who knows? Um, or less. You never know. But I think some of these other assets that like are really high, there's node monks, there's there's uh, puppets that are coming out of there. There's other ones that people can sell for pretty good Bitcoin prices right now. And it, and then they can kind of rotate that into runes if that's what they're looking for. But that's just kind of my um, perspective on it. Cool. Yeah. Well, one more thing, though, is like yeah, I, I, I can sell my, my, my bitmap right now. I can go to element.market and I can I can list it. I can buy them there. So to me, it's not that big of a deal. I, I can sell all my bitmaps right now. And I can buy, you know, hundreds right now as well. So there's definitely a market there. They are a lot. They're about, I don't know, 40 percent cheaper to buy on element.market than it is to buy them on Magic Eden. But it's still I mean, I, I just think it, I think they go to that price and that's the minimum. So it's not that far. I mean, 40 percent does suck. But I think that that'll be the bottom. Yeah, and I think the uh, that's also the the opportunity, right? For you know, a lot of people who and you know don't want to paint with too broad of a brush, but you know, a lot of people got in early. You know, and me talking to people, I've met people that you know, yeah, I minted like three thousand of them for like two dollars <laughs> for two, right? I've got a thousand. I've got a few hundred where it's like you know, yeah, it's like. I'm more than they're more than happy to to rotate out of some or half, but that's the opportunity for so many people who the people who are still here, who are, it's like yes, I would love to see them buy your bitmap for twenty dollars, for forty dollars, for you know whatever it ultimately ends up ends up going down to, and I think that's the sort of the uh, the positive aspect of the unlock is that letting that cleansing happen and letting that rotation happen to people who. Have you know have already seen who've felt the pain and are still here? Because if you felt the pain and you're still here, like those are the the core people that we definitely want on the uh, on the ground floor. Yeah, completely agree. Excellent. Well, All right. So uh, <laughs> I was about to say, go ahead. Go ahead. yeah, the uh, the the shilling part. So because uh, you know Ben Schiller, I definitely have to <laughs> make. Uh, Make make myself worthy of, of the name. So the thing that we're looking for right now, particularly with uh, Bitmap 420, um, is uh, our testnet. So uh, we've just opened our uh, our testnet waitlist, um, and you know, really looking at this as a co-creative process. So um, you know, trying to get people who are who definitely want to see you know the space evolve and looking at it from a point of getting feedback from the the various early earliest stages possible at every stage. So uh, we're talking, you know, sharing uh, wireframes. It's like okay, getting feedback on wireframes. It's like sharing a mockup. Okay, this is the mockup, and you know, on and on as we get to the actual testnet deployment, and then ultimately on on mainnet. So that's our our big adventure right now, which is filling up our testnet waitlist. So. Uh, if you love bitmap and you want to see utility of bitmap, you love BRC 420, you want to see um, you know utility and liquidity to, to both of those things, definitely, definitely, definitely go to bitmap420.com. 
Uh, yes, we got a .com, which is awesome. Um, and in the uh, scroll down uh, a bit, or there's a button at the top uh, that lets you start to earn points because crypto, and we're definitely going to be doing points that ultimately uh, potentially lead to token airdrop as I do my lawyer speak. Uh, and, uh -oh. uh, but it starts with uh, getting onto getting onto the test net. And if you want to multiply your points, uh, we do have a BRC420 asset that you can either mint from brc420.io or we've put, um, uh, and this has been an instructive uh, experiment, is we minted a bunch of, uh, of these assets, our eggs, our egg zero, ego, um, minted them on brc420.io and just put them on Magic Eden at mint price. And that right now is mostly where the the sales are taking place. So people are given the choice between just buying on Magic Eden. Uh, I think we've sold more in the last two weeks than we had in like the previous, uh, you know, two three months or however long they were they were on there. So we try to keep the uh, the the Magic Eden site filled. Take some some time to to get things on there from from time to time. Um, but you've got you've got options. So um, if you want to mint directly or if you want to go to Magic Eden and, and buy a floor, we typically have uh, a supply supply there. And just as a, a quick thing, why we why we did it this way. So, um, and this is, I think, one of the things that made me really want to build a, a marketplace um, for BRC420 was um, this, the thing that you're looking at is a, uh, oh my goodness, I can totally just do a whole separate thing on, on this. So, Basically, the marketplaces don't treat BRC420s as I feel that they should yet. So, for example, what you're looking at right now is a GIF of the image. But um, if you uh, if you click into one of those, uh, just any one of those, and you get to the um, one of the inscription uh, things. So, yeah, scroll down to to the right and click on the uh, inscription uh, ID and copy that over and throw that into Genie data. Sorry, and you'll see that the, uh, so for example, Genie data will actually treat this as a 3D object where you can spin it around and turn it and zoom in and you can you know, see all the you know, generative art aspects. Whereas you know, one of the marketplaces like Magic Eden just says, hey, throw up an animated GIF and, uh, and that's, what you, that's what, you, what you get. So, uh, in making this, so yeah, now try to just like spin that the egg around. Oh, there, there it is. Oh, there you go. It does stuff. So that thing, and if you go to like hit like oh, the little code, cool. yeah, hit the little uh, code icon underneath that on the bottom, underneath the, the, the uh, egg. Yeah, right there. Up, there. up, 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 up. This? Right, right this? there. Left. Then the one to the left. Gotcha. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Roll up. Uh, it's the HTML. Yeah, so that's the recursive thing. And if you actually really click into uh, click in and copy that onto um, that inscription, and then you'll see like the actual code. But anyway, that egg itself is like 2K or something like that. So it was just to start to get the idea about like, hey, you can start to build. And this is ultimately where I see the Bitcoin metaverse coming. We'll see how you know it unfolds. But basically, you're not generating you're not creating things, you're creating code and the code creates the thing. Whether that's an experience, whether that's an environment, um, ultimately the code will be able to create itself. <laughs> uh, that's like the, you know, the AI future vision, but um, that kind of efficiency and you're starting to see it if, you know, look up um, uh, bitmap sunset. I think that's the, the best uh, example so far. Look at all the stuff that Bobbleton's doing. Uh, that's another great example with the the bitcopter where you have code that's starting to generate the experiences super um super efficient super creative um and just you know really really fun so i think those are the types of uh those are the types of things that i, I get super excited about bringing it all back <laughs> if you have the egg that's a uh, a points multiplier um so for your potential token airdrop uh, if you have the egg and you uh, accumulate points, the your points will multiply for all the people who hold the eggs. So go get the egg. Now, would this token be a rune BRC twenty? What, what are you guys thinking? Obviously, you're probably not there yet. But if you had to choose today, what would you choose? Uh, not there yet. 
I def, you know, I think the in practice, as someone who's, you know, like I said, I, I'm a big supporter, down 80% on the weekend because, you know, runes and names. Uh, just, But th I think that's one of the clunky things about runes. I think, obviously, from a tech standpoint, they're more efficient. I think the naming part hasn't, it's, be, I don't know if it's a barrier yet. I guess we'll, we'll see. But, you know, I'm looking at the stuff that's on uh, OKX on the you know web3 marketplace on uniset and i'm like is bybit going to be able to list recycle the cum i don't you know, <laughs> i don't think so right <laughs> is is coinbase going to be able to do oh, manko mank or whatever it's like and that's fun you know i'm into puppets i've created uh you know if you go to the inscribed space marketplace i created a uh a ketamine uh, monkey pup to go into the inscribed <laughs> state. So I'm all down with it. I'm not, that's not a criticism at all. But in terms of, you know, bringing liquidity and uh, utility, it's like, I'm not sure I can, you know, fulfill that if, if it means standing next to, you know, the uh, recycle, the cum ticket. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to call this a show. But Ben, you did win an award, man. Uh, the ugliest PFP I ever had to stare at for an hour. <laughs> hey, you can't, you, you can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> talk crap about Blue Steel, man. Blue Steel takes over. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's my, uh, my kind of sub sub goal, which is to uh, deep fake myself into a version of, uh, of Derek Zoolander. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Merman. Merlin. Merman. Oh, I love where this is going. <laughs> All right, dude. We got to get out of here. But thank you so much, my friend. We can't wait to have you on again with some updates. And uh, hopefully they'll be soon. So um, I'm expecting you to get to work and, get, <laughs> and start getting this stuff up because I'm excited for what you're building. Excellent. Nighttime for you guys. It's uh, sunrise here in Dubai and definitely what uh, we're about to do. Get back to work. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Thanks a lot, Ben. See you soon. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. Um, he's, he's, he's an amazing person. Uh, we have, we had the chance to talk to him a bunch on spaces. He's been uh, an at, and yeah, I guess so many times, which has been absolutely amazing, but th this is really awesome and very intimate and really got to know him as a person and what his project is building, but it's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I, we just need it. Like it needs to come together. And I, and I, I feel like he's the, 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 the right project manager for this. Um, and this is going to be big for bitmap. So all you bitmappers, I wore the shirt for the, for the show. And, um, <laughs> Just, you know, hang in there, hang in there a little longer because, you know, this is something that can bring everything together. You still, like he said, you got people building still, you got the, I'm so Chris's, you got the, you know, the Foxies and the inscribed that space. Now all they need is just a, a place to meet together and to have consensus and our community will be back thriving very soon, I believe. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, man. All right, guys. Uh, please smash the like for us. It really helps the show. Please hit the subscribe. It really helps. Hit the little bell icon because that helps as well. We appreciate everybody, everyone that watches, everyone who engages. Remember, we are live Monday to Friday from 11 to 1230 uh, Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central Time. So check us out, guys. We're live all week. Come ask us ask questions. Get, we, we, can, we can really get into a lot of things being live. So we appreciate you guys. And uh, definitely check out orderrevolution.com. We have some of the best articles. If you're going to Bitcoin Nashville, we have a 20% coupon at the top there. Click that. We'll meet, meet us in Nashville. We'll be there. And if you need some ordinal gear to wear in Nashville, we have a store there as well. So check that that out. If you're not going to wear our gear, wear someone else's. Let's show the let's show the maxis that you that your ordinals and let's let's really be out there and uh, and show that ordinals are the thing to be. But did I miss anything, my friend? Nope. That's it. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Peace. Or in the revolution. Let's go.